What is going on guys, my name is Bryce and today we're checking out the X3D Twinkling Red Filament. Today, the X3D Red Twinkling Filament. This stuff looks amazing. It is by far the most amazing filament I've actually printed so far. Um, pretty much, uh, I got in contact with Mark over at X3D and he actually agreed to give me some filament to try out and do a review on. So before anyone starts jumping to conclusions, this video is kind of sponsored, but not really. Um, the review is still completely unbiased towards X3D or anyone else. So let's just take that to note and let's get straight into what I think of this filament. I'd have to say I'd absolutely love this filament, but it does have a few little issues with it when it comes to printing it, and it's, it's a little bit difficult. So when I first started printing this, uh, I was given a small little test sample to try out first, and then I was gonna determine uh, whether or not it would be worth doing a review on it. Uh, I didn't have any problems with that test sample. Ever since I've been given um, some extra filament, and it wasn't a full roll, so if anyone not wants to know, um, given the extra filament to try, I did run into a few Funny issues enough, though, where stuff like of, this happened, like where the print you know, didn't finish because it jammed. Um, as you could expect, this is a twinkling filament. Even so though it's actually, it's it actually a PLA blend bits inside the filament. In some sort Surprisingly of enough, it printed really well. Twinkle. Is a twinkling sort of plastic, I don't know, whatever the, the right, light reflective uh, glittery spots uh, are inside the filament. Even though this has the uh, twinkling sort of fleck into the plastic, uh, as being a PLA blend with a sort of glitter or fleck uh, sort of thrown into the mix. It prints really, really well, but only on, I would recommend, nothing smaller than a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Uh, I did actually start printing this particular part. This is actually meant to be a phone stand for my Google Pixel, and it jammed because, at, and that's pretty, the, the part itself, you know, it's, it's a pretty big part. It's not a small part. Um, the, the filament jammed on the extruder um, and the hot end due to the fact that the, the actual nozzle has to be big enough for that, those flex in there because for some reason I was just having a few issues when I was trying to print with this one it was a 0 0.35 and a 0 0.3 millimeter nozzles. Um, I couldn't print with my 0 0.4 properly but I did test it on a 0.4 and it did print pretty well with good results. Uh, I did print this mostly on 0.5 millimeter nozzle, which is still loaded up back there into the, uh, into the hypercube. Um, so I do highly recommend printing it with at least a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, which is, which is normal. Uh, not many other people have you know, smaller, bigger nozzles, unless you specifically changed it yourself. Most printers come with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Um, other than that, I didn't have too many other issues with extruding. Now, I'd have to say, using this filament on something like this really cool vase. Now, I can't remember the name of the guy that made this vase, and I will link it in the description when I remember it. Um, but this is one of those zigzag sort of, I don't know you guys, if you guys can see that. It's one of those zigzag sort of vases where it's all sort of zigzagged and lined around the sides. It's actually really, really strong too. Um, this looks amazing in this filament. You just look around the entire part, there's little flecks just popping out. It looks, it, it looks like a really, really attractive part. As well as it is not that hard to uh, get rid of layer lines with this filament, uh, the the actual flex sort of helps sort of blend off those those layer lines with this filament, and they actually kind of blend really really well, which is not what I sort of expected out of a regular just sort of a kind of reddish translucent sort of uh, PLA with a fleck thrown in. One great property I found of this filament is actually it's really really reflective when printed in a single layer. Now, this is just my desk ornament low poly thing. 
um, that I based off what uh, Angus at Maker's Muse did with his low poly thing. Um, and this prints really quickly, it's pretty quick to test. Uh, and the bottom is obviously really shiny because it's, uh, it's actually printed directly on glass bed, so that doesn't really give it justice. But I mean, you guys can even see with the light, all the lights on, you can see how reflective one layer becomes. But then if I grab something like the vase, it's not really reflective, you know? So I actually found that's really cool property. There's, if you really want it to become a really sort of a reflective or kind of a shiny surface, literally printing it with just one perimeter um, actually gave off a really, really nice look. Um, unfortunately, it did get a bit patchy on the top of this just because my settings weren't dialed in perfectly and speeds and stuff like that. Now, the last uh, couple of things I'd like to look at is how well this filament printed, and it prints really, really well. Uh, it also prints between the temperatures of about 180 to about 220. It's a PLA. It's a regular PLA temperature. Um, I printed all my parts with the nozzle starting, or the hot end starting at 215 degrees, um, as and it goes down to 205 once it hits the third layer, which is the optimal sort of printing settings that I have on the Hypercube. Uh, and the bed was at 70, de um, 70 degrees. Uh, I didn't actually change anything else. Um, I pretty much use those settings universally across all the PLAs that I print, and I never have any problems. So this is my miniature Maker Coin, which is actually not so miniature because I scaled this right up to see how well it, this filament handled so lots of these retracts because there's actually a lot of a lot of retracts inside this sort of dipped area and these like you know these recessed areas and some weird cutoffs and stuff like that. It printed this with perfect layers. Um, it did have a little bit of an issue that. It, didn't seem to want to cool very quickly. Um, I had the cooling fan on at 100%, where most PLAs that I print these coins in, they have no problem with the underlying side, the, um, the side that faces down, because this is actually a sort of a beveled edge. Um, so yeah, like some of the further greater angles, uh, a lot of PLAs, kind of cool and do a lot and look a lot better at the bottom whereas this one didn't so much and I think that's actually got something to do with the fact of the flake um, because the flake is not a plastic so it might be absorbing some of the temperature or something like that I'm not sure I'm not a scientist I don't know I just know that the layers didn't come out as well as I would have expected but I'm not gonna lie this this coin with these beveled edges are not kind to uh to filaments it is a pretty pretty steep edge and it's got a lot of angle on it most filaments can just barely do it uh this one i'd probably say it passed but it would need a lot of work to clean up if you were using this as like a showpiece and something i would love to do now as a um now doing with filament reviews is i'm going to start making these little cubbies uh i will link the person in the description that designed these I think he's designed two of them or something like that but these are just little honeycomb little drawers that actually interlock with each other and I've actually put on the bottom of that X3D twinkling red um, and these it just it, it, the tolerances on this on this filament are actually really really good uh, sometimes I've printed with some sort of filaments like uh, a, a particular ABS or high-end sort of one of those really really strong filaments i think it was a color fab uh, actually had really really different uh sort of properties and when it cooled and sort of sat down and actually had a more of a shrinking expansion uh with this particular pla it actually has a pretty good it, it holds its dimensions quite well um i have had a couple of uh really really cheap plas that i've tried that just they, they suck they just sort of as they cool they really really shrink up um, and I end up getting you know sort of like a millimeter or so or more off the the size I remember printing a, a 20 millimeter test cube and ending up with an 18 millimeter test cube because of how much it sort of shrunk um, that could also be due to settings but this filament tolerancing 
is really, really easily with it. Um, and as well as I love when printing this filament is you don't really get many of those flake ridges on the sides. So typically you'd think there's lots of flakes in here, uh, the flake sort of thing. You'd, you'd think if it doesn't go out sort of the right way in the in the uh, layer, it, it would maybe point out of the, the edge of the, the plastic a little bit. It actually doesn't. It's quite uh, quite smooth actually the edges on this with this filament. It prints beautifully um, and especially these sort of filaments that had very very minimal um, surface area as you can see you can see that shine there that had that's all the surface area this actually has on the build platform didn't have a problem with adhesion with this filament at all um, I do sometimes with color fab stuff um, and again with this part here it was just flat on the floor like on the on the bed like that as well and that printed up and this little handle thing um, also printed flat on the bed that actually gets glued on but uh, yeah it actually printed really really well surprisingly for sort of the setup because I'm not used to printing in a 0.5 millimeter nozzle uh, it's a very different sort of filament but tolerances are perfect and because I know you guys really really love fidget spinners I printed one of them this is just a regular nut fidget spinner uh, Tolerances with this are really, really good. Um, the nuts actually and the and the bearing fit in really, really nicely and really well. Uh, the caps that I printed, they're just simple captive nut sort of, or captive sort of uh, design. It works really, really well. The tolerancing was really, really good on this. Um, I even got the hole details. So I'll see if you guys can see. There's even like the little, little hole in the middle there in the shape. On all, all sides it, it printed and has really really good tolerances surprisingly because I actually thought with the 0.5 millimeter nozzle it wasn't gonna make that gap I thought it would just sort of mush it together into one sort of single piece um, X3D do great exotic filaments as well as really really good ABS and PLAs surprisingly is amazingly cheap too um, and then they do even pr more premium stuff as well uh, they got wood fills. I think they got a carbon fiber in there. They've got, uh, I think they got bronze and stuff like that. Bronze fills. Uh, they've got this twinkling. They've got a new, really new silky uh, that looks really, really nice as well. Um, actually, I do have a print over there with some in it, but um, I'll, I'll save that for later. Uh, but yeah, it, it just everything is just. I really want to compare a lot of that stuff to what all the other expensive stuff that we pay for because. X3D, this this roll of okay, this roll of twinkling is not super cheap. It is in Australian dollars. I do believe it's about uh, sixty-five dollars. I could be wrong about that. Um, I will correct it as a flash up on the screen if it's wrong. Um, but pretty much, like all the PLAs, like I, I print PLA X3D PLA all the time for test prints and just useful items uh, quite regularly. That that, that stuff's only like forty four dollars or something like that australian for a spool you go somewhere else or order online and you're paying 50 60 70 80 dollars for not even a kilo x3d stuff is a proper kilo plus the spool so it's really really good value for money and i'd like to compare it to things like uh color fab and you know like uh i don't know rigid ink and stuff like that it'd be a really really good thing to have a look at and maybe at some point in time do a do a cheap versus a uh, you know expensive uh, filament test and sort of test out a whole bunch of different filaments and see how well they actually all sort of print and how well they sort of go together all right guys thank you guys so much for watching make sure you hit that subscribe button and the little bell next to it as well just so you know when i've actually uploaded a new video you'll get a notification to your phone or computer uh, make sure you hit the like button as well to uh, help out the channel it really really does help out and it also pushes the video out to other people to see and to sort of see this sort of information as well i'll catch you guys later